Hey everyone, this is David Brown with the Migration Update for May 4th, 2024 from the Braddock Bay Hawkwatch. Kim and I started the day before sunrise at the Braddock Bay West Spit. The first interesting bird of the day was this dove or pigeon that flew over and gave us a nice look and I got photos as it was going away, but this bird did not have a long tail like a morning dove, but it didn't really seem to be the shape of a rock pigeon either, so I don't know if this could just be a pigeon that I misidentified or if it could be a rarer species. Here's a morning dove for comparison. You can see that really long tail. In fact, the scientific name is Zenaida macrora, meaning macro aura, long tail. Here's another bird that we did our best to misidentify as something good. Here we have a tern, and we were hoping it was something rare, which I won't name which one we thought it was, but looking at the photos later, I think it might just be a young common tern. Here we have a male scop. We see that the bright white is only on the inner half of the wing and does not extend onto the primary, so this is a lesser scop. And this one has kind of an odd circle on the face here, not sure what that is. And here we have a large tern with a very thick orangish red bill and very pointed wings. This is the Caspian tern, and we've been seeing a lot of these. There were around 40 or 50 of them hanging around the bay today. At the West Spit, we had a total of 50 species. Next, we headed over to Braddock Bay Park to start the Hawk Watch at 9 a.m., and there was a lot of anticipation for today because I had hyped it up so much in my forecast from yesterday. But unfortunately, the winds did not cooperate today. Um, instead of having those good southeasterly winds, we ended up with a northeast lake breeze for most of the day that would occasionally shift to east, and then at the end of the day, it did eventually settle into the southeast, but very light, and we had overall gloomy conditions, um, overcast skies most of the day. Now, it did brighten up in the midday for a little bit, and if we had had those good southerly winds, I think we would have got a nice push of birds during that period, but Overall, the winds didn't cooperate, and we ended up with a relatively small flight, though we still had some good looks at various raptors, and there was a good variety of non-raptors around as well. This photo isn't very good, but it's an American tree sparrow, which is lingering later than they usually do, and is now coming up as rare on eBird. Here we have a hawk with a long tail and long wings with rounded tips. We should be thinking excipiter, and in this case, we see this bird has a large head. Very lanky overall, long straight wings, a long tail. The outer tail feathers are slightly shorter than the central ones, which you can just barely make out. Gives the tip of the tail a little bit of a rounded appearance. And we see a vertical brown teardrop streaking to the upper breast. This is a juvenile Cooper's hawk. Here we have three birds of the same species. We see that they're completely black on the front and the face. The back of the head has kind of a pale yellow color to it, and there's some white highlights throughout the back and the rump area. These are bobolinks. Here we have another excipiter. This was a small one. We see a relatively small head and a very squared off tip to the tail. This is a juvenile sharp shinned hawk. Here we have a songbird that's overall pale underneath and a little bit of a distinctive facial pattern and a white eye ring. This is an American pipit and there seem to be several flocks of American pipits migrating over today. At one point while I was walking through some tall grass, I came across this garter snake. Here we have another excipiter. Note the small head, especially as it pushes its wrists forward. The head barely sticks out beyond the leading edge of the wing. And we see a tail that is not only squared off, but is even notched in the center. This is another juvenile sharp shinned hawk. Here we have a somewhat large raptor with very pointed wings. We should be thinking falcon. We see a lot of blue barring underneath and a distinctive blue patterning to the head. This is an adult peregrine falcon, the fastest animal on the planet. Here we have a loon that circled around the platform and really gave us a nice look. And there was a little bit of debate about whether this was a common loon or a red-throated loon. So I won't tell you which one I think it is, but leave a comment below and let me know, is this a common loon or a red-throated loon? Here we have a large dark raptor. We see a large head that's becoming white and a lot of white throughout the underside of the body and the wings. This is an immature bald eagle. Here's another excipiter and we look at the tail and you might say, well, that looks a little bit notched, but actually what's going on here is we have some feather damage. So the tail shape in this case is not very reliable. But looking at the other aspects of the bird, we see that it's relatively lanky looking. We see a head that's relatively large and extends out in front of the leading edge of the wings quite a bit. And we see some teardrop streaking, especially on the upper breast. And we also note that this bird is banded. 
This is a juvenile Cooper's hawk. At the hawk watch today, we had 74 species. After leaving the hawk watch, I decided to stop briefly at the church trail to get a quick walk in and ended up having the best raptor of the day with this light morph rough-legged hawk. I ran into another birder named Neo and we were walking together picking through the warblers and we came up actually to this spot where we found the golden winged warbler yesterday morning and we looked up here in this tree and spotted something different. Here's a relatively large songbird and it's overall very orangish red. And so our first thought was Oriole, because we're seeing a lot of Baltimore Orioles around and even some Orchard Orioles. So Orioles would be the more expected thing to see. But as we looked at it, we said, wait a second, that's not an Oriole bill. That looks like a tanager. The expected tanager in this area is the scarlet tanager. And they're deep red underneath with very black wings. And that's clearly not what this is. This bird is more orange and does not have that black wing and it has a much larger bill as well. This is the rarer summer tanager, which is more of a southern species and quite the rarity in this area. We put the word out and several birders came to see it, including Kim, but actually a lot of people came and we didn't find it. And so we had started to leave and then someone did spot it and called us and we had to run back again, very reminiscent of yesterday morning, having to run back to see that golden winged warbler. And I'm happy to report Kim did get to see this bird, and then she collapsed on the ground out of exhaustion from all the running. And it's funny how birds can bring back memories and connect different times and places. Seeing Summer Tanager brings me back to the very first Summer Tanager that I ever saw back home at a place called Canfield Island. And there were a lot of great birders out that day, and it was one of my first real tastes of a lot of great birders being together on a day where there was a huge variety of birds around, including some other rarities. I think we had a clay-colored sparrow that same day as we walked around out there. So uh, that's the first thing I think of when I see summer tanager. And the other one is last summer birding with Kim down in southern Delaware at Redden State Forest, getting to see nesting summer tanagers among this huge forest of these towering loblolly pine trees. And we had one final bird as a bonus. Here we have a vireo, but it's not the typical warbling vireos we've been seeing. But instead, if we look at this bird, we see that it has a yellow throat. The yellow is more concentrated here on the throat and less so underneath. And we also see that it has a lot of black in the lores in front of the eye. So this is a Philadelphia vireo. From the church trail, we had 40 species. Altogether today, I had 94 species, so not a bad day at all. I had four new species for the season today, which were semi-palmated plover and short-billed dowager, both from the West Spit, and both of those were out on the barrier island and too far for photos. And then I also had the Philadelphia vireo and summer tanager from the church trail. Taking a look at the hawk count report for our migrant raptor totals, today we had 77 turkey vultures, one osprey, four bald eagles, two northern harriers, 21 sharp-shinned hawks, three cooper's hawks, 15 broad-winged hawks, six red-tailed hawks, three American kestrels, and one peregrine falcon, for a total of 133 migrating raptors. That brings the May total to 4,686 and the season total to 57,289. Taking a look at the forecast for tomorrow, it's looking like rain early and then cloudy with showers in the afternoon, a high up around 70, and wind south at 10 to 15 miles per hour. So that's a good wind, but I think with all of the rain that that may prevent a raptor flight, even in the afternoon as the rain tapers off just to showers. um, I may go out to the hawk watch and just see if anything's happening, but I wouldn't expect much for tomorrow with those gloomy and rainy conditions. But I should say that there's southerly winds and rain tonight, so it could be an awesome day for non-raptors. You know, songbirds start migrating at night and other things as well. You get some rain in the middle of the night to knock them down. Um, I'm expecting to have a lot of good birding tomorrow and hopefully find some more rarities. So don't let the rainy conditions keep you at home. Get out. There's a lot of warblers around and hopefully with the rain and southerly winds, some new rarities will show up along the lake shore. For Monday, we're looking at a few clouds early, but otherwise sunny and warm with a high in the mid-60s. Winds northwest at 10 to 15 miles per hour. It's a slightly unfavorable wind. Would expect light to moderate migration. 
And for Tuesday, it's looking sunny with a high near 60 and winds northeast at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Would only expect light to moderate migration, and we may have to move to Frisbee Hill on that day. All right, another great day of birding from getting out to the West Spit in the morning and picking up some new shorebirds to the Hawk Watch where the weather never really cooperated. So that was a bit disappointing that we didn't get the big Hawk flight that I think a lot of people were hoping for and that I was hoping for. But there was a good variety of bird species around and we got to see some cool things like bobolinks and a lot of white crowned sparrows and then stopping by the church trail at the end of the day and having pretty low expectations thinking, well, you know, a large number of people already birded there today. So what could possibly be left to find? And then finding that summer tanager and having all the excitement of people getting to chase that and almost miss it and then finally getting it. So lots of excitement this time of year and really we're just getting started into May. We have great southerly winds again tonight and hopefully some rain will knock down some rarities for us. Hope to see you out soon in the field or at the Hawkwatch platform. From Lyco Birds, this is David Brown. Thanks for watching.